morning and welcome to my channel Foxy Keto. My friends call me Jelly. I've used a ketogenic journey to lose 206 pounds. Yes, I have some water weight going on because I uh, did net carbs in December. I also really didn't track anything other than net carbs and I, I, I might have had some cheats as some people would call it. I just call it a timeout. Um, on Christmas, Christmas Eve, and New Year's. So, the first of the month, I was up in water, and we are working on getting all that water weight off. The goal by the end of the month was to have all the water weight off and to be in the 150s. Am I going to make it? I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and show you this morning glucose readings, um, ketones, uh, and, and everything. And then we're going to discuss a few things. I'm recording this because I can't find it. I thought I recorded it. So this is yesterday. I had 16 total carbs, 108 fat, 123 protein, 1504 calories. My steps were not all that great yesterday and I didn't get my workout. So yeah, almost 6,000. I should have took a few more steps, right? This is my sleep for the week so far. Um, I am averaging about 6 hours and 20 minutes. This is without an alarm or anything. I'm just whenever I fall asleep, whenever I wake up, I've been trying to go to bed by um, 8 p.m. But I think my time is off or something. I don't know. The time is never right. Like on Sunday, I was up around 4 a.m. and it says I didn't wake up until 6. Um, Monday, I was up before 7 and it says I got up at 7.18. So I kind of think it's all wrong. And I'm in bed asleep at least by 10. Like I'm in bed by 8, but I know I'm asleep by 10 or 11. Um, I toss and turn for hours before I actually fall asleep. Um, but yeah, I don't know. But at least I'm getting, my body says I'm getting like, you know, six and a half hours sleep. I think it's more. I think it's not really counting it, but I don't know. That's what it says. Let's go. Okay, still no ketones according to this thing. And I'm doing it over and over again to try to make this move, and nothing's happening so far. So, let's try the real way. And see what it says. Because that thing can get you really discouraged. Okay, one second. Zero point two, no ketones. But I bet if I go eat something fatty and come back. So all this basically means is whatever ketones I'm producing, I am burning so quickly that it's not showing up. Like, that's a real thing. That's why Dr. Eric Westman don't have you testing your ketones and stuff. Um, my blood sugar is a little high this morning, not sure why, maybe because I didn't sleep very well. Um, so it's 90. Okay, GKI 25. Horrible, horrible, not in ketosis. Okay, so, not really sure why the uh, glucose was up <clears throat> as I choked myself. I've been doing that a lot. <coughs> I think it's because of the allergies. So, um, first collagen coffee of the morning is eight something. Didn't wake up hungry or anything. So, I'm still trying to come off the ibuprofen. I've, it's only been a few days since I had my last one, which means there's no way I would be in ketosis anyways. But I'm still, you know, showing you that even though I am eating less than uh, 20 carbs a day, and it is, what, day six now? Day six now, so I've gone five whole days on 20 total carbs or less. I'm still not reading in ketosis. And that happens when I take ibuprofen. 
It normally takes me over a week of no ibuprofen, which I don't know if I can do in January. We'll see. Before I even see low ketosis. That's just how it works. <laughs> so, yeah. That's just... The, it's why I decided in September to go to net carbs. And then, what was it, November... I ended up doing a 30 day challenge where I had to go back to total carbs. Um, and then I went into December and, and yeah. And my lowest so far has been 162.8 I believe, but I've only held that for two days. I've hit it twice, twice and only held it the day I hit it on each time. And then went back into the 164s, 163s, but it still counts as 106 pound, 206 pound weight loss because that is how far, you know, that's as low as I went so far. So we're working on right now getting back to the 160s and maintaining it or going lower. Okay, I have this, I have this issue every year because September rolls around, my fibromyalgia flares up. So I start taking ibuprofen over and over again. I hit a new low and then I have to fight to stay at that new low while I'm on the stupid ibuprofen. Then after I go off of it, which is usually the end of January, see, see, see why it's taking me so long to lose weight? Then, then I can start shooting weight off again. My good months for losing weight is sup in 2020 because of the whole coronavirus. Um, my good months has always been February, March, April, May, June, July, and, it, well, not July. Let's forget July. July, I'm usually in Hawaii until August. And <laughs> so, I, yeah, definitely don't lose weight because I'm not 100% keto while I'm there. So, five months out of the year, I've lost weight. And this has happened over and over again since my first step into keto. That's why it's taken, everyone's like, it's been three years. Yes, but only five months out of each year. And if I'm lucky, six, am I losing any weight? The rest of the time I'm bouncing around like ping pong over and over again. And it took me a long time. It was this past year, 2020, that I realized it was the ibuprofen. Because I got another injury. I usually don't have to take it too much during the summer at all or, fall, or spring and I was in a lot of pain and I started taking it again and I was like, what is going on? I'm not in ketosis. I'm, my sugars are going up. I'm not losing weight. This is not normal. And then when I went off, it did it again. So I tested and did it again and it, again and again. And then I started doing research and I'm not the only one. Ibuprofen affects. There's a whole list of drugs that affect people that don't affect others. So they just don't list it like doctors don't go over it like a keto doctor doesn't say well this will hurt you this 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 they don't go into that because there's no hardcore evidence research about that um but it does it affects me greatly so let me go ahead and um so you today's weigh in and here's my weigh in 164.4 that is one pound down um yesterday um so I am coming down quickly in this week. So I am very excited. I think that means right now I'm sitting at really no water weight. And it's time to get some fat off. Okay, so I have gone down more. Um, so I am excited. Very excited, very happy. Um, seeing my progress because I was really upset that I did not hit my steps yesterday, and I did not do a workout yesterday. After choking on those stupid eggs, I was in too much pain, literally, to work out. And I kept having all these horrible burps over and over again for like two hours afterwards. I must have sucked a lot of air in or something. Um, then, so, so I didn't make any of my fitness goals. I have a weekly fitness goal, so that means I'm going to have to add more to the rest of the days. Um, I want to do about 70 steps, oh, 70,000 steps a week, so that's about 10,000 a day, and I want to do an hour workout 
Okay. And it can all be done. It, it's a week thing for me. So if some of my days are 5,000 and some of them are 15, 17,000 steps, it'll still equal. Um, the same with my workouts. Sometimes I do workouts longer, sometimes a little shorter. It should average in the end. I go off a weekly meter thing that gets sent to my email from Fitbit. Um, also, I want to make every week better than the week before. So that's something I have to figure out how to do too. <laughs> Am I going to put more steps? Am I going to put, like, I'm going to have to beat each week. That's my goal until I get to my weight loss part. Like, once I get to my weight loss goal, then that's, you know, everything would be gravy. But right now, I really want to get there as quickly as possible. So, are you following phase one of in the your carb confusion? Or page four, it's the same thing, basically. It's hard to be teeny bit different. Um, it, is that something you're doing with us? Are you on phase two, phase three? Um... Let's say you're doing phase one, and you're like, I can't handle this every day. It's depressing me, it's upsetting me, you know, maybe net carbs would be better for me, or maybe a higher carb would be better. Um, I don't know if this will work for your body, but I will tell you, I have done all the ketos out there other than vegetarian ketos, because that makes no sense to me. Um, so I've done all the ketos there is. Mediterranean probably to me is the most healthiest, um, but it's rough on my stomach, so I don't really do too much Mediterranean keto. But if you are falling because the 20 total carbs in phase one is just too much for you, um, because I have I've gotten a lot of people saying that they love it, it's easy, no thinking, I'm getting a lot of private and emails saying it's just too hard, it's, I don't want to go seven days a week on 20 total carbs, boo boo, this is your journey. If you can't do it mentally yet, or you don't want to, then you don't have to. Find another way to do your keto, but if you want to continue to do it with us, why not try Monday through Friday doing phase one, okay? And then Saturday and Sunday switching over to phase two. It's 50 total carbs. I don't know if it'll work for your body. I don't know if it will kick you. I don't know what it will do to you. But if this is a mental game right now and you still need those quest bars or, um, protein cookies from Perfect Keto. Ugh, that's all I've been craving, but don't worry, there's none in my house and I can't afford to order none right now. Um, if those are things that you want to add on the weekends to get you through, then mix it up. Do phase one during the week and phase two in the weekend. Because that's what I plan on doing in the future or plan on doing phase two through the week and phase three on the weekend. That's after I get to my weight loss goal. Because, you know, Tammy from Keto and the Chaos was totally right about if you do the little test in the book, you'll never probably be into phase three if you go by that um, along like the test. Let me see if I can pull up the test for anyone who did not see that video. Give me one second to find it. Okay, so here's the test. You take it in the book to decide what phase you're in. So let's, we're going to go over it. And I'm going to tell you what. Uh, overweight, your BMI is between 25 and 29 or um, obese and higher. Then you need to start in phase one. I don't know what my BMI is. I I'm going to have to look that up. It's probably higher or in those numbers I, I'm pretty sure it's over 25 large waist circumference your abdominal area but not overweight meaning you're the weight you should be but your stomach is too big 
Um, that would put you in phase two if you check yes for that. Weight resistant. Um, okay, so if you've had the weight loss surgery, then it puts you in phase one because you had the weight loss surgery. Um, if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, it puts you in one. I'm not anymore. Uh, if you're type 1 diabetes, if you're overweight, do you have IBS? I have it, but it's under control with keto, so I would not check that because that would put me at 1. Migraines put you at 1. I always have migraines. Um, brain fog, 1. There's so much here. Like, gout, 1. Um, gout with no other health issues, 2. Heartburn, 1. I'm going to have heartburn my whole life. I don't want to be in stage one just because my heartburn. Fibromyalgia, you need to stay in phase one. <sighs> so if you're slightly overweight and otherwise healthy with no issues, you can be in phase three. You don't have to do the other phases according to the book. And yeah. And here's the part that they figure out your BMI for you. Basically, it tells you your height. It doesn't care about your age or sex. And it tells you how much you should weigh. So, healthy for my height and weight should be, see, I'm almost 5'7", but I'll go with 5'6". Um, should be 118 to 148. So, 5'7 is 121 to one. 53. Um, so I'm kind of in between those areas. And remember, if you're not new here, then you know I've always said my goal weight was 148, and that happens to be what the goal weight of this book is at the start of. Um, like I've said, I don't usually say go buy a book, but if you're new to keto, this is really good. Like it can, it teaches you stuff like if you're missing rice, you can have rice cauliflower. If you're missing noodles, you can have spiral zucchini, yellow summer squash, um, shakataki noodles, miracle noodles. Um, it doesn't say palm noodles, but a lot of people use palm noodles. Um, milk, so like unsweetened almond milk, cashew milk, uh, coconut milk, nut milks, anything that's unsweetened. Like if, like, if you want mashed potatoes, have mashed cauliflower. Are you missing bread? Have egg whites, um, well, egg wraps or lettuce wraps, cabbage wraps. I would have put meat chaffles in here, too. Gives you little examples of what you could eat in a day in phase one. So let's go. I've covered the first one on the mill before, so let's go to, like, day three. Um... No, day three are leftovers. Okay, so uh, day two would be breakfast, meat, and veggie breakfast hash. So loose sausage, and you got to remember some sausages has carbs. Dice, bell peppers, onions, zucchini if you want it. That just sounds gross. I could come up with a better menu than that. Coffee or tea. Lunch, Philly cheesesteak, no roll. Um water or sugar-free flavored drinks, meaning you can have Zevias, diet sodas, all that stuff. Dinner, baked pork chops with mashed cauliflower. Dessert, sugar-free gelatin topped with whipped cream. So you're allowed light jellos, the sugar-free jellos you find everywhere. So when I did page four, um, I was eating a crap load by gelatin, but um, they made me gain weight, so I thought page four was causing me to gain weight, and this is basically page four, and it's all because it was spiking my sugar. I couldn't get in ketosis, and I was having a sugar issue, and it was the jellos and the pudding, the sugar-free puddings. Um, I could eat them the first year, and I was fine, but I was 368 pounds. The smaller I get, the more I have to tweak things. It's why I am back to phase one, because I want to get the last bit of weight off, and I really have to tweak stuff. And mine's never been a calorie issue. Like I said, I can go to 600 calories and eat just 600 calories of carbs and gain weight very, very fast. I proved that in March. Um, also, other snacks could be 
canned fish, celery, um, blue cheese, guacamole, drinks can be water, tea, sugar-free flavored beverages, um, like other snacks is like deviled eggs and pepperoni, like I could come up with a lot more snacks. Um, but so phase one is just really strict. It's 20 total carbs or less, one cup of this, two cups of that, six olives, one tablespoon of this, two tablespoons of that, um, unlimited protein as long as it's not processed with tons of carbs, sugar, stuff like that. Um, and that's the part that already freaks people out, unlimited protein. But let's look at it this way. You have to decide to make the best choice for your protein. When I have unlimited protein, the first thing I go to is a boneless, skinless chicken breast usually. Eight ounces. Barely had it because most people, some people have to count calories. So we'll work on the calorie thing for you right this minute. Um, boneless, skinless chicken breast, air fried. Okay. Very much calories, but there is tons of protein and it will fill you up so much faster than say chicken thighs with the skin or um really fatty hamburger meat or something yeah no you're only gonna see me eat um lean stuff you might see me eat a porterhouse occasionally or um i used to eat ribeyes all the time but my stomach doesn't like it i'm not saying that i don't feel way better when i'm eating ribeye or fattier meat as in physically more energy and feeling better or when I used to pour the MCT oil into my drinks and yes yes I lost over 160 pounds pouring MCT oil into every coffee and I drink about five a day I have five tablespoons a day of MCT oil and I was losing weight like there's no tomorrow no brain fog I felt so amazing in those categories but it was actually one of the things that were causing me so much stomach issues. So it was bye bye my MCT oil. There is some in my collagen that's powder. Um, it works way better for me, but it's not as much as I was getting. And the brain fog came back. <laughs> so that, that MCT oil really helped with the brain fog. Now my ADHD type stuff is all back and I lose concentration really fast and train of thought. Um, but yeah, so you, just because it says it's unlimited, just because it says you can have sausage and hot dogs and hamburger and, and any kind of meat you can think of and, you know, pork rinds and beef sticks and gelatins and puddings, um, does that mean it's the right to go hog wild or to pick the worst of the bunch? Okay, because some beef sticks, which these are too spicy for me, but I'm still going to eat them, are really, really good. Grass fed with no maldextrin. That's why it's really good in my opinion. A lot of y'all care about the grass fed part. I, I don't, I don't, I've never seen real research that proves that makes it better. I care about maldextrin because I can't have it if I want to lose weight. It raises my sugar and it makes me feel miserable. So it's a ingredient thing for me and it could be for you if you stall. At the end of the month or later in the month we'll do a whole video about stalls in case some of y'all stall. So I have a discord. The link is down below. I want to start using it. I'm going to start, um, when I wake up, I'm going to start turning it on and um, popping in and out of there. I want to set up a time that will actually be in there and hopefully others can be in there and then we could just talk. Um, remember, Discord uses voice. There is a typing area, so you can type at any time and leave messages in there and I'll always come back and find them later. Um, and don't forget, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so that is tomorrow, we'll start the first live on the In Your Carb Confusion book, because I'm going to do one a week on it, 
um, and we can discuss things. You can ask questions. You can say, I'm 5'11", what should my weight range be? Or, you know, 4'3", what should my weight range be? I will answer those questions for you because I don't think you should have to get, buy the book just for that part. Like, I'm not going to sit here and read the book to people because that's not fair to the authors. But I am more than willing to go over this kind of stuff with y'all um, and pull out information here or there out of the book for you because we're all here to help each other. So I'm really excited about that live. So what am I doing today? Other than I am starting to get hungry now, maybe because I pulled the, uh, the little stick out and it made me want to eat it. Um, but I have to go in less than an hour, take my like drive to the Ford place. My parents got to drop off their vehicle to get um, the whole old change, battery change, you know, tires rotation. And then I got to bring my mom back home. Then I have an order at Sam's. I ordered some more of their eggs and different stuff. I have to go pick that up, um, bring it home. And then sometime today they'll be calling and I'll be taking her back over there to get the vehicle. Yeah. So I'm going to got a lot of errands today. So I hope to get my workout at least. I don't know if I'll get the 10,000 steps, but the goal is to at least get the workout done today. And that was the problem with yesterday, is I, the days I have to go do errands, I'm exhausted or I just don't have the time. The reason I'm getting my steps in is I'm going out there and at least doing 2,000 plus steps, usually um, one mile, you know, an hour type deal. I'll go out there and do a mile come back in, do some stuff, go back out there, and it doesn't take an hour, okay? It takes like 15 minutes or so. Um, but what I'm saying is that I'll spread it through multiple hours, and sometimes I'll do it all together, but it's how I figured out, you know, if I do this many steps each hour, I'll get to my goal by the end of the day. So, yeah, because those steps to me are not a workout. They're just steps. The part that really counts for me is the actual hour workout. Um, and it's just to make my body feel better, try to build some muscle. The workout has a lot of squats because I'm trying to build my booty and shrink my thighs. So yeah, turning fat into muscle. So I might be building up the muscle, but I'm trying to take away the fat and see what happens. So I'm going to shut up because I have been talking way longer than I thought I was going to. I will show you what I eat today and what I get from Sam's, which I think I just got eggs. I'm not sure. I'll show you. It, it's one of those pickup orders. I've never done it at Sam's before, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm at Sam's waiting for a pickup order, but I'm going to have to get out and pack it myself just to make sure it's all here. Plus, I need to put them in the cooling bags so I can make it home without melting, defrosting, whatever the word is. I'm starving. Absolutely starving and I'm wrong. It's one o'clock. So I am about, where is it at? Did I lose it? No, thank God. So I'm going to have one of these bad boys and I'm drinking my water. I've only had the one collagen coffee. I've been crazy busy and when I get home, I'm going to have to turn around and go to the other town to get the vehicle again, which means I still won't have time to eat. It might be an OMAD day. And yes, I'm hungry and I wish I ate breakfast, but at the same time, it's okay. It's not going to kill me because I'm going to eat those hamburgers and maybe some scrambled eggs. So I'm going to get all my calories and everything in real close to it. So I'm not worried. I just want to eat. All right, it's 3.15. I still haven't eaten. I'm about to cook, but I kind of wanted to show off my cute little outfit that I'm wearing today. Um, I really like it, so... Let me see if y'all can see my boots. <laughs> but this is my outfit. I still have a lot of weight to lose, but I'm liking more and more what I wear each day. Like I feel more and more confident in them. But just, you know, got some boo-boo areas still to get rid of. Um, oh, I went to Victoria's Secret. Anyone who's been watching my channel will know that I bought two bras they were not cheap they're like 54 dollars a piece and they're the wrong size i took them back in and they gave me the wrong size again not their fault in my opinion not my fault either because i lost 63 pounds since the last time i was able to actually 
try on a bra in a store and I was um, 36D. Well, the last time I was told they could not exchange them again, period. Um, but I went in today just to see and there were two ladies that's been working there a very long time. They are not new employees like the other ones were. The ones that told me I would be a 34D and I bought them. My boobs couldn't even fit in them. They looked at me and laughed and said, you are a 34 double D, not a D. And she was totally right. So I'm wearing the new one right now because they exchanged both of them and double Ds do cost more money. But because of the inconvenience, they were very sweet and they charged me no extra. It should have been like $18 extra for the two and I didn't have to pay it. So I was very, very happy and I wasn't mean about it because it was no one's real fault. I mean... I can't really get mad at people right now because the world is just crazy, right? I it, They can't measure you. They can't let you try the stuff on. They are guessing and when they are new, they can't look at a set of boobs and tell you the size. They were not new. They both said the same size at the same time, the size I thought I was, but the girls said there was no way because I was wearing a D, but they didn't know how bras work. When you go down in the band, but you don't go down in the cup size, you have to go up in the cup side. I know. It's weird. Bras are weird. And if you don't know, you don't know. And I guess they need to chain them a little better because if you're working in a bra store where you can't measure and you can't try on, they need to at least teach the girls what to do, right? <laughs> so, and I went into a belt. So I'm thrilled about that because I saved a bunch of money because I thought I was going to have to just toss them out. Went into belts and they have 50% and 40% off all their Kanik Christmas sets. Holy crap. Because I am back. Like, from 13 to about three years ago, I have always used the Kinets, lotions, toners, everything. Um, because when I was a teenager, I was told by Kinet people and my mama that if I used it every day, religiously, I would never, I wouldn't get wrinkles, right? Okay. So... I kind of believe it, but for the last three years, I couldn't afford to do it, so I've been doing coconut oil only. Um, but I really love those products and really want to start using them. I was using the toner, though. I've always used the toner. Um, but there's so many products that I had missed. Well, they were on sale for Christmas already. So a $200 set. Let me go get it. Hold on. Bring y'all down. It's making my head shake looking up too much. Okay. So, I already bought a bunch off Kanik, not Kanik, Kanik products off of Ultra because they had all the Christmas ones on sale too for like 50% off. And you already get a deal because they're in these things. So, this is $150, well $154 value of the lipsticks. At Christmas, they sold it for $50. Well, today, I paid like $28 for it. Hold on. Try that again. Okay. So, check out what I got. All these for like $28. I know, $28 is a lot. However, these are going to last me a year. Easy. So, because I got Christmas money, and that's why I spent some of it on. Now, this one is my beauty supply. It's over 200 and something dollars. They were selling it for 100 and something dollars, but today I picked it up for $49.99. From Belts, people, Belts. All these products. So I went to buy, I went in there to buy this one. It's $39. And when I saw I could have all of these, and this is 39, the mascara is 20. I don't even know how much these are. These are almost 30 something, I know for sure. I know this one right here is 22 something. So, you know, your girl had to get it. So, this is why I use my Christmas money that I got for my baby on. I got this. And this was his money. And I've ordered some storage type containers to do all my keto stuff. I'm going to make a keto closet and I want containers to put each thing in. And yeah, I've gotten a lot of organized stuff from him for Christmas. And I'm using my parents' money and some of his money to get my hair done once I lose the 10 pounds. Um, so yeah, 
I've had a long, very long day and I am starving, so I'm shutting up and gonna go cook. Don't worry, I'll show you what I'm gonna eat. We're freezing to death. She decided to join me for a little adventure. I'll show y'all. We're out here in the swampy backyard. That's not supposed to be a swamp, but it's turned into one and it smells like one too. It's gross. Like, seriously. It's so gross. All the bushes died. This used to be filled with tons and tons of briar. You can see a little here, but all of it is not so far in the water, they all died. And holy hell, I'm cold. So, yeah, I know, I said bad word. <clears throat> so, At least put the back there yeah, no more hiding kittens back here, it's in the water. So maybe they won't get that warm thingy. Okay, so I am freezing. We're going to do this little circle and then go in the house because I can't feel my hand, so I need to get it in my pocket like this hand is. So I can't record and walk today. Ain't happening. Say bye. Bye. Oh, good grief. I come home to a nightmare on the TV. I don't usually talk about um, too much political stuff on my channel. Um, yeah. Whether or not I believe the election was unfair because, you know, I believe in in-person only and I believe in IDs. Without an ID, I don't think you should have the right to vote, period. I think voting is just as important as driving and without an ID, you shouldn't be allowed to uh, vote. And without a driver's license, you shouldn't be allowed to drive. That's my take on it. So do I believe it's ever fair? No, because we don't have those laws. We don't have an ID law, so... I don't think it's fair either way, any time, any election. That's why I never voted until this year, because I think it's rigged every year. Because there's no ID. There's no proof who you are. I had to show my ID, but no one else did. It was the craziest thing in the world. They, because I voted for the first time, they didn't believe it was actually really me, I guess. But that being said, yes, I'm a Republican. Do I believe and agree what just happened? At the Capitol? No. No, you're looking stupid. You are being just as bad as the people that were out rioting over some other stuff this all summer long. Okay? No. No. Going and sitting and breaking into the chambers is not the way to do anything. You're going to look like an idiot and make us all look like an idiot. I know none of them are watching, but holy crap, I'm really mad that they were that stupid. Because now they're making all Republicans look stupid. Now when people say we're Trump tards, uh, that's why. That's why. Because of those Trump tards. Because I, I can support Trump and not be stupid idiot like those people. What? What? <sighs> that's, not, that's not how it goes. That's not going to help anyone. Riots about anything helps no one. It's just stomping your feet like a little kid. No solution is ever made off of a riot. It doesn't fix anything. It gets people killed, people hurt, more people angry, more people hating that group of people. It's not an answer. So, yeah. Because I don't want anyone to look at me and say, well, she's a Republican. I wonder if she agrees with this. No, no, I do not agree. We're breaking into the Capitol. Not at all. Not even a tiny bit. That's all I'm going to say about it. And, and it's, it's really frustrating. And I can't even watch it because it's making us all look bad. And I, I don't like that. We're supposed... <laughs> Anyways... Love y'all. Thank you for watching my channel. And um, I'm sorry if that offended you, but it's true. Like, it, there's, you're not going to win anything. You're just going to look stupid doing that. So let me go show you what I'm about to eat because it is 4.05. My food is finally ready and I am starving. So let's go. Let me see. Where did I put my food? I got so upset watching that. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to make a video. All right, I'm going to turn y'all around and show you. Same as yesterday, but I'm eating more tomatoes. I'm going to 63 tomatoes, like grams of tomatoes. My little burgers are hiding. I'm having two. I am starving. I am having my second collagen coffee. 
and going to ignore that TV over there.